Hello, brothers and sisters in Hardo's family. So as I was doing the Lord's Supper, the Lord gave me John 15 about remaining in the vine. And I felt that this is a response to scared to say yes message. I felt it so strongly that as the words you were speaking was jumping out to me, the scriptures were coming alive. If we remain in him, we'd recognize that suffering, trials, and testing is an opportunity for us to bear fruit to be pruned, and to bring God glory. And that we shouldn't fear, but just to remain in Him and remain in His love. That will sustain us alone to say yes to whatever the will of God is is in our lives. And I know for me, that's what is being attacked right now. Not only my faith, my trust in the Lord, but even my love. Because The more that we're willing to suffer, it shows the more that we love the Lord. That's a litmus test. And I realized, Lord, my love is getting cold. And I felt as I was reading the scriptures, Jesus was holding my shoulders, looking at me, saying, just remain in me and remain in my love. Trust me. So as I was reading the scriptures, this is how my conversation with Jesus went. He was speaking to me through each scripture, through each verse. So I began reading. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch of me that does not bear fruit. And immediately I heard Jesus' voice so clearly and loud say, On the contrary, you are being pruned so as to bear more fruit. And everyone that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. So, beloved, remain in me. Do not leave my side. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. That is how you remain in me. It means to remain in my love. So don't give up, retreat or leave, beloved. Many of my brides are being tested and purified more than usual this Lent. And it's most necessary so that you may all bear more fruit. Pruning is never fun or even easy on my part. I hate to see my beloved and anointed one suffer in self-love and in self-pity because of the pains of their trials. When you hurt, I heard too, you know, although I know it's best for you. Sorrow born of self-love is full of anxiety and bitterness, far from healing your souls or wounds, but rather serves only to pour poison over them. But sorrow springing from love of God is serene and full of abandonment to my perfect will. So it pains me to see you when you suffer this way because I know it's not healthy and rather will harm you in the long run. And I long to run to your side, to comfort and console you in telling you to let go, trust me and abandon yourself, knowing that as you submit to my will, you remain in me. And as you remain in me, all that I'm doing will work out for your good. You'll bear much fruit from your trials and suffering, much fruit. And hear the verse, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, he says, meaning the words that I speak to your heart, Every promise, every inspiration, every prophetic word given to you to bring you hope, let it remain in you. That is where your faith is, tested my brides, because continually all of hell will continue to come against my promises to you, because what Satan wants to steal is your faith. But hold on, hold on to my promises. Let every word I have ever spoken to you directly, through others, even in these messages, Let it remain deep within your heart and reject all doubts and all other words that come against what I've spoken to you. If you do this, and he speaks the scriptures, ask then for whatever you want, it will be done for you. Why? Because you will then ask according to my will, according to the promises I've given you, according to the desire of my heart, and indeed it will be done for you. I'm letting you on a little secret, my beloved brides. Begin to pray the promises I've said to you. Speak them and ask me to bring them to pass. 
now, finally, it is the time. My promises and your breakthrough will happen suddenly. Don't give up asking. Go back to our promise list. Ask Holy Spirit to remind you of all I've said to you and all I've promised you. And speak. Then ask Him with great boldness coming to the throne of grace. And what you ask will be done for you. By this, my Father will be glorified. And that was the end of Jesus' message. Truly, guys, the scriptures came so alive for me as we're speaking. Like Mother Claire taught us to read between the lines. Jesus speaks between the lines of scripture. I could just visualize myself tugging away inside Jesus. Despite my fears, despite my doubts and insecurities. And just remaining in him. And here John 15 says fully the scripture. And here fully the scripture say in John 15, I am the true vine and my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And here when Jesus says that he remains in us, it reminds me again of the scripture that he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Even when we don't remain in him, guys, he still remains in us and draws us back to himself that we may remain in him to bear fruit. Amen. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples.